Welcome to High Schooler Interviews. My name is Joey Kaufman, and today I get to talk to Cooper Rafe. Um, to tell you a little bit about the show, uh, I'm 16 years old, and I want to talk to people. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in, in people, and uh, especially people who, uh, who make things. And uh, uh, Cooper Rafe certainly does that. Uh, he made a film called Shithouse. He was the writer, director, uh, and he starred in it. Um, uh, this conversation was really, uh, it was really fun for me, uh, just to, to talk to somebody, um, who, whose movie, uh, I really liked. So, uh, I tell you guys to, to go out and watch Shithouse. You can rent it on Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah, and, and enjoy the interview. Cooper, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, man. Um, I just wanted to say that I watched Shithouse, like, a week ago and uh you know one of my one of my dreams one day is to to make a movie and i know like everybody says that and it's it's a pretty lofty goal but it's true it's it's one of my dreams and watching shit house um knowing that you guys that you made it when you were in your early 20s and and you you didn't have that much money um it was just really inspiring to me, and it was it was so good. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, I uh, I I was in. Uh, how how old are you? I'm 16. I when I was 16, I I wanted to make a movie real bad too, and I didn't think that it was like uh, I thought it was a very lofty uh, aspiration. But I it's 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 easier than you think. I think I think it's um. Uh, more doable today than it was like especially when I was like 16 I think or maybe maybe it was just as easy I just thought of it as a big a big thing and it's it's sometimes it's not yeah I mean how much so I mean I want to talk about shithouse um I also want to talk about your your life um so I guess I want to start with with your childhood and uh, and like what you were like and when you were my age. So how would you how would you describe your your childhood? Um, my childhood or when I was your age? I think I think when I was your age, I uh, I was uh, a goofball, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think uh, I don't know my childhood. I uh, am an older brother of like two little sisters and. Um, I uh, had like mad ADHD when I was like, I still do, <laughs> mm. but I think I was just like running around uh, unfocused a lot. And I, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I think when I was 16, what was I doing? I, I was like, I was doing theater. I did like, I was on my high school improv troupe. And um, what play did we do that year? We did like uh, I think a play called Bright Ideas or something. It was like I, I forget what it was. I think it was called Bright Ideas, but it was about like two parents um, trying to get their little kid into an elementary school, and they like poison uh, another parent to like get in or something. But anyway, I I was really interested in like acting when I was sixteen, and I don't think I was like uh, an aspiring filmmaker at all. But I think I always wanted to like act in a movie. And I also like did was in this like acting studio like that was like kind of film oriented, and um, but yeah I also played basketball and was into sports and but yeah I didn't have like a clear idea of like what I wanted to do when I was gonna be older, so mm. yeah. But so you were into acting, but you didn't know if that would be a like. When you went to college, were you thinking about about acting and, and making movies? Yeah. Well, so my, well, and it was really just like when I was, my senior year when I was applying to colleges, I was like, I have to figure out what I, I, I don't think I had the idea. I wanted to be, I did want to be in LA because I wanted to act. And I think I like decided that probably uh, when I was like 17 or maybe like the summer before my senior year. And then, but when I, I applied to a bunch of different colleges for like a bunch of different things like I, I applied to a bunch of screenwriting schools 
And then I applied to a bunch of liberal arts schools and a lot of them were in Los Angeles because I wanted to like be able to, my acting studio had like um, this Hollywood showcase thing that they put on. And so there was this Hollywood agent, Cindy Osbrink, who would come down and like that summer before my senior year, she had told me next year, if you come out to LA, I'll sign you and you can go on auditions while you go to college. So come to college in LA. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do that. If Cindy Osbrink tells me to. Mm-hmm. And so I applied to mostly uh, California schools and, um, and I ended up getting into some, some screenwriting schools, which was awesome, but I decided it was weird. I, um, I had like a panic near the end of my senior year because I was like I was about to go to a screenwriting school and then I just like realized that's not what I want to do for some reason I think it was because I like maybe I was like too confident in myself but I I, I didn't want to be like taught screenwriting at all I had no interest in that like all of it, like very suddenly and I think it was because I got cocky maybe I made, I made like this I wrote this play my senior year after I got into a bunch of colleges and I really really liked it and I acted in it. And um, there was something about like going to a screenwriting school that made me scared about like me, like starting to hate writing because I just knew that it was gonna be four years of just that and people like, and I'm just not very good at in the classroom. Like I'm not, I think my goal was always to drop out of college. And I think that's part of the reason why I had a, a not a great first year is because I was like mm-hmm. focused on going on auditions and like also just like focused on writing outside of school because I ended up going to Occidental in Los Angeles which is the small liberal arts, liberal arts school and so um, yeah but I ended up going to Occidental and uh, what, did, what did you study I, there? I studied media arts and culture so like mm-hmm. but that's the thing is you don't have to decide until your junior year I dropped out my junior year. So like, mm-hmm. I didn't really study. I studied like, I, I took a bunch of different classes. Like I took science classes, and psychology classes, and I maybe took like three total media arts and culture classes by the time I dropped out. <laughs> mm. And like, what was that like dropping out of college? Cause so- To, to make a college movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's ironic. I, I, I it's, um, it, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't, I don't think shithouse is about, um, like the importance of like going all four years, even though both characters are like going to go all four years. I think like I was just focused on making a movie about your second home and college was like what I knew as my second home. So I made a movie about, about college. But I think, um, yeah, it kind of, I think there was part of me that was like, people are gonna know I dropped out as soon as I make this, as soon as I watch this movie, that's like, give it a try, you gotta give it a chance. Mm. But I think I, it's more, the movie's more about just giving your second home a chance, like not like necessarily saying you have to go to college because I don't want the people who like aren't attending college to feel like they can't relate to it. Because I think everyone can relate to shit house and just that everyone leaves home at some point, even if you're just going down the the street you gotta yeah. not live with uh mom anymore yeah although some people i think do live with their moms for their entire lives under the same roof which is rare yeah <laughs> but like what did your so you didn't study um well you went to a liberal arts college yeah. and but you liberal, kind of li- liberal arts it's so hard to say for, for me for some reason. I mm. always am like liberal arts. <laughs> mm. um, sorry to interrupt. What? Like, um, but you kind of had the the understanding like that you wouldn't really focus on it while you were there. I think or- that's right. Yeah, I think I or I, for a lot of reasons, I was just like, I don't want to be here. Like, I'm trying to get out of here. And I think that that was a, an unhealthy decision on my part. But I think um, I think my sophomore year, I had a really good year and it was because I just was like, I want to learn. Like I do love learning. And I think my high school, Green Hill in Dallas was, uh, an intense school. And I, I think I felt 
burnt out, like uh, in terms of uh, going to class and studying and like being taught. And so I think in hindsight, I think I could have taken like a gap year and that would have been great for my headspace. Uh, but my sophomore year, I think, especially like the summer before, I like, told myself, just go and like be friends with people and uh, take your classes seriously, even though it's not going to like mean a bunch in the long run. Like you're not going to remember it 10 years later. It's not going to probably be helpful for your career, but it's going to like make your brain bigger and like having friends is a good thing. And so I like focused more on the college experience. And then my sophomore year of college is when I made this like short movie that turned into shit houses. And so that short movie, um, when I got it into uh, Jay Duplass's hands and he was like, we, we should make this movie into a bigger movie. I was like, all right, I'm dropping out of college. Mm -hmm. So like, I think, but I do think I had a good amount of like, a, there was a good portion of time where I did take college seriously. Like I was, was like, I, I did dive into it. So I, I, and maybe that's just me saying like, no, I promise I did do what I say that I should do in the movie. Cause I do think I did that, but um, I did drop out pretty um, fast when someone gave me the opportunity to. Yeah. And like, so in high school, you, it seemed like you, you had this like ambition to, to act or like, like at least, you know, you liked acting. So what was that like to, to have, like a thing outside of school that you were that you were dedicated to. Um. Uh, that's that was everything for me, because I didn't. Um, I wasn't like super in love with school. Um, but I did. I mean, I li liked school, but I. I think, maybe, my. Family, like I think my. My sister is the same way. Maybe not actually. Maybe she like is more into school and doesn't. Because I guess she doesn't have that many outside. Maybe that is unique. But I, when I think back about like high school and even middle school, like middle school, I was just obsessed with basketball and I was like traveling every weekend to like for tournaments and stuff. And I don't remember much of like school in middle school. And like for high school, what I remember most is going to the acting studio on Saturdays and like playing in basketball games and like dating my high school girlfriend. Like, I don't really remember too much of um, the school part of it. Although I had some really great teachers and like my advisor, I like keep in touch with and she's awesome. But like the, I guess school isn't my favorite. I like, like English classes. I remember those mm -hmm. like uh, reading things, but um, like I blocked all of my math classes and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, ha, ha, what, to answer your question, I loved having things outside of school because I didn't love school. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard you talk about the like the studio you were you were in uh, in high school, and I mean, it seems like really because like I I take a theater class in uh, in high school and all we um, like right now like we read a play and then we're like working through scenes, but. It wasn't you didn't use scripts in that in that class, right? Right, yeah. That cl that class that studio was uh, very interesting, and like I think to some it was like very cult like because it was like it, there was this lady Linda who ran it, and she would just she loved to talk and loved to like have students sitting down listening to her talk and. And that's what I mean by a cult like and so we come into class on Saturday and for like the first 45 minutes she'd just talk about like something manic and mm. we'd all just like we were all like young kids who were like yes yeah for sure and looking back I'm like some of the things that were talked about were insane probably but after that 45 minute talk we would then spend the next like hour and 15 minutes doing scenes like kind of based on what she talked about a little bit or just like whatever we were thinking about. And those scenes were just us, go, we would get lined up in a, we'd get in a circle. And then it'd be like, I think there wouldn't even be turns. It'd be like whoever wants to go, go goes. And whoever that you want to go across to, you go across to. And so I'd be like here. So it'd be like me, Noah, Alex, Ian, Griffin. And then uh, she'd be like, all right, whenever someone wants to start. And then I would 
I never started, but for this example, I started. So I would, I would start walking across to Noah and I would just like say something to start a scene and, um, Noah would have to, it was almost like kind of like improv, but like more, not like we weren't trying to make jokes. I mean, sometimes we would make jokes. It would be like funny drama. Like it, it couldn't be like, can't like put it in a category because it was just like 16 year olds talking to each other really. Mm. And so we would just talk uh, about this like situation that I would somehow try to like let him in on. Cause it's, cause it's hard to, cause you don't like whisper, like here's what the scene's going to be about. You just start talking to him and he's like trying to figure out what scene he's in. And, um, but then some of this, the scenes would last like six minutes long, which was mm -hmm. like so boring, I'm sure. But it was really helpful in terms of figuring out like a rhythm with, especially with other, cause there was only like six students in the class. So we like with everyone, I felt like I had a very nice rhythm and chemistry. And some of the scenes I think were like great. And I think I learned a lot about writing, doing those like improv scenes kind of. Yeah. How was writing connected to that um i think like just knowing uh how to like shift tones maybe like i i think people talk about tones way too much like i don't ever try to think about like a tone but i do try to make things like really watchable with like the themes that i'm trying to discuss and so i think uh i don't know i those conversations or those scenes would help me go from something uh more serious to something like lighter so that it's uh easier for my like my friends to watch because i was always cognizant obviously about like i'm in a scene but like and i'm present in the scene but i'm also thinking about like i want other people to have, have fun watching this like seven minute scene and that, that's what was like interesting about it too is uh very rarely were the scenes like airtight two minutes and funny so I so within the seven minutes you had to like make it as entertaining as possible, and so I think that that's and I think Shit House was born out of a lot of that. Like there's a lot of obviously in Shit House a lot of conversations that I tried to make um, engaging and uh, thematic, but like um, it mostly is just two people talking. Mm -hmm. Um, what's like, what's your writing process like um with with uh like with anything you do um how much is it is it like mostly born from from things that happen to you or you know how do you like get the ideas onto paper i think it it's i don't want to um if people think that everything happened i to me i think that that's okay but like telling the truth though, no, nothing in the movie really necessarily happened, but all of the feelings did. And I think the movie is me trying to like bottle feelings in uh, ways of like, like turning a feeling into like an argument or turning a feeling into like a theme and like picking characters, like picking a character like Alex who's very open so that I can sometimes show those feelings raw. And I think, um, and there also, also the movie is very much based on relationships that I have, and not necessarily like though that night necessarily didn't happen between me uh, and my girlfriend, but like I was trying to like bottle our relationship up in that one night, and um, yeah, and like a, a lot of our arguments throughout the three years that uh, we were together centered around. Um, how much you have to how important it is to take care of yourself and like how much we should be looking out for uh, other people and so i was trying to like bottle up those things that are i think to me just like feelings and like making them into something that uh kind of feels like a cohesive uh real experience but i was like trying to say things like so i don't think I've never been a writer who's like, what happened to me yesterday? I need to write about it. Like that's mm. something that I'll never do. Cause I don't think that's like interesting. And um, so like, I don't try to like think, I don't, I think a lot of people think because it's so like, right, like so basic and real. I think people think I just like think about a conversation I had and like try to recreate that. But that's like a bad idea, I think. I don't, 
think anyone can pull that off and make an interesting movie. Not saying that shit has a super interesting movie, but like I think um, I've never done that. I've always tried to like say something with each scene, but then try to like I do care about being very realistic, so I do try to like bring things down. Another thing that was crazy about the response to shit house was how awkward people seem to think it is. And I really promise I didn't try to make it awkward. I think yeah. Alex is just an awkward person. I tried to write uh, how things would play out with him and this person, Maggie. But it's yeah. funny because I I must have an, a high awkward tolerance, but people reading reviews and stuff, like <laughs> like it's so excruciating. I had to pause it because it was so awkward. I was like, oh my God, okay, sorry. I mean, <laughs> I didn't think it was that awkward but i could definitely tell like when he's standing by her bed yeah, yeah i just thought like like the tension is like like palpable palpable yeah yeah i i that to me it's i think it's funny because that scene to me is the funniest scene in the movie and so i think of it that way instead of awkward and i think some people are so caught up in how because it i mean it is awkward but like i think i love I think those are the funniest moments because like they both know i just i i love maggie because i she she just is such a pro at those situations you can tell and the way she like sits down and like lets him just kind of hang there and like i was very i love how in the common room it's like her right here and him right here and then we have like the switch that she allows to happen because like she's very much i think she just knows how to play things and she she knows how to start and to like uh, get him not scared but get him ex- excited and to say yes to coming to the room and then once they're in the room it's like she's very good at be, uh, being seen to a certain extent and I think that um, I just love that scene because she lets it play out like she's totally in control in that whole scene I don't think that she ever feels uncomfortable or awkward mm-hmm. so that's why I, I think I was hoping that the audience would feel like the way Maggie's feeling about like, you can do your awkward thing, but we're, I'm, I'm, she's very care- like careful and taking care of him almost. Like she's not forcing him to do something that he doesn't want, but she is kind of like moving him along to what she thinks that he wants and what he does want. And, but I think a lot of people get caught up in Alex's headspace, which is like, mm. just like, ah, <laughs> and um but i think some of those lines like when she's like do you want to take your hoodie off i just like die at that and yeah it's like because it is um so sweet too and um but yeah it's excruciating for, for a lot of people it's mm. and like you're acting there's something there where you're acting there is like very relatable and like there's something sincere about it and she's um you know, like there's something like kind of cold about about yeah. her, and yeah, I think it works. Yeah, she's she's got like she's got the 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 walls and the boundaries, and I think she um, knows exactly what's. Uh, I think she knows like what's attra- attractive like to certain people and i think it happens that what what i love about like this specific relationship is that alex comes along and he's like doesn't find certain things like like he can't just can't do certain things because it needs to feel i don't know what it needs to be for him it's just i think he's just it's all his fault like he's just a paralyzed dude but i think um that because she is, she's cold, but I think she's, she can, she softens in, in a nice way with him that I think like she, she's just good at, uh, she's just a really smart character. And also Dylan brought a lot, like the actress Dylan Galula, mm. she brought a lot of like uh, warmth to that coldness. Because it is, a, she's a cold person who um, is just very mature and like, yeah, cold, but um she's uh like almost like no bs that kind of thing that like moves things along in a nice way but yeah yeah. um how much attention because like when she you know the the structure of the movie is that like like you meet and you have this great first night but then she ignores you and like 
I wanted to know how much attention there was when you were writing it to like the structure of that movie. I mean, did you like, did you take other movies as examples or um, like, you know how pe some people say that, that there's only one story that like, it's like the hero's journey. I mean, um, yeah. Did you pay attention to that? No, I'm really bad at all of that. I think I Jay helped me a lot with like uh, he's like he's really good at plot, and I'm, I'm terrible at plot. <laughs> like all I care about is like what's gonna happen with these characters, and um, no, I mean I I would have written a, I mean I don't think I ever would have written something like Before Sunrise because the, this sounds horrible, but but like. I those characters don't in, like interest me in terms of their dynamic. I love that movie so much, obviously, but like those characters will spend that whole night together and not, um, and it will take like m many years later for us to see like the uh, the real conflict. And mm -hmm. with Alex and Maggie, they're not like you can't do a whole movie of just walk and talk like the same way. Like I, I think some people. Uh, I've I've read some things that are like I kind of just wish it was like them talking the whole night, but that wouldn't have been true to those characters because like Maggie's gonna wake up and treat him the way that she treats everybody, and um, and even more so like putting a foot on the neck kind of because she's like so an annoyed by the way that he's like she's like I mean the thing that people don't talk about is like Maggie's I think disappointed in Alex like she wants it to be like. Maybe she maybe she did wake up thinking I never want to talk to this person ever again, and that's like her right, and like maybe that's. But I, I think I'd like to think that Maggie did want to see him again. It's just like she doesn't know how to do that morning thing of like getting breakfast. No, that doesn't interest her, but it does interest her to like maybe see him again. It's just like so. I think she's like disappointed that he comes on so strong and clingy. Like I think she would love it if he left, like was cool about it. And then maybe like six days later reaches out and says, Hey, do you want to like, uh, hang out? Uh, like, are you going to this party tonight? Like if that happened, I think Maggie would have been, I think she would have responded to that. But instead mm -hmm. you have this person who hasn't had any kind of social breakthrough whatsoever for six plus months. And when he does have that, he's like, I need to stay inside of this comfort zone that I've now created for myself. And um, so he just ruins it. And that's why you have like the 2.5 years later is because like he has to figure out how to like play it cool at some at some point. And mm -hmm. but yeah, I did not answer your question. Like the, to answer your question, I didn't try to do like a break into the third act with that morning. I know it kind of is, but um, but yeah, I mean, we had conversations about the first act is um, we us seeing Alex in college and us seeing a little little bits and pieces of Maggie and um, how they're struggling. And then the second act was always going to be like we always said like second act is before sunrise and like mm -hmm. the bear bearing the turtle. And what really activated it in a nice way that I didn't necessarily like for the for the short that I made, I think it was just them visiting, like. It wasn't like an activated journey of like we're gonna bury the turtle and i think that that's very movie like and jay kind of helped me uh turn that into like a, a goal that these characters have for the second act it's not just them walking and talking because like it what we always said the second act is before sunrise but he wanted it to be like there needs to be a journey and when it clicked that um alex is gonna help maggie process feelings like that, that was always going to be the second act, but to have it be activated in terms of we're going to go bury the turtle. Because before the short was always him helping her process feelings, but it was that they were just visiting the turtle that she buried. She did bury the turtle and they were going to go visit on the mountain just to like, like say words or something. Mm -hmm. But then when Jay had the idea of like, no, they should be like going to bury the turtle. And like, well, where did she put the turtle? And then I was like, oh my God, perfect. Maggie would just throw it in the dumpster. Cause mm -hmm. that's so Maggie. And, um, and like in the first original thing, they did have the whole, Alex helped her like say words and they like, she, she like, 
really like visited what the loss of this tur turtle that she loved so much. And so that was always in there, but there wasn't this like journey to the burial, like to like burying the turtle. And that's like the goal. So that was a big part of the second act. But yeah, and then the third act, we, um, I don't know, I've never read a screenwriting book. So I don't know what the third act usually consists of, but I do know that people talk about three acts and I do think that that's where the third act starts. <laughs> so for you, when you're writing, is it just like about these characters who are like very real to you and they're, they're different perspectives? Yes. That's all, that's all movies are for me is like uh, two characters that I'm like fully like head over heels in love with. And then themes coming from those characters. Like you have a character and um, and I always care about being true to that person, but I try to pick dynamics or characters that like are bits kind of not not necessarily arguments, but just two different things. And like saying two things from like if you have like two characters, and you have like themes inside of them that come to the surface, and that's I think what all of my movies uh, will always be. And then you have like the the characters around them that uh, challenge them, but like the, that central relationship is the main uh the, the main conflict for me i think will always be the clash of like not just personalities but like what stage a person is in their life like right now like the next uh movie that i'm gonna make is like about two people at very different stages in their life and they're helping each other get strong for those stages like they're very they're both kind of sensitive people who like they know whose hearts are open for them and they are spiritually aligned in that way and share sensibilities, but they are at very different stages in their life and they're helping each other um, get ready for those stages. And it's kind of like heartbreaking because they wish that they were in the same stage, but they're not. And so I think mm -hmm. that that's, I think that that's what I always care about is like really trying to say something with the characters. Cause I always just care about characters and I always say that, but I think what I really care about is like actually saying something. And so, um, but yeah, plot never comes into my mind until like the producers come in and are like, you need plot, man. Mm. And so I try to like think of like smart ways to highlight what I already care about doing with a plot. Yeah, because for me, what what I like the most about um, about just movies in general is when the conflict isn't like, like the characters have to solve a crime or something, but it's just right. that like the two, the two characters, you know, are, are conflicting with yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's what's most, I mean, I had to think that that's what's most interesting for everybody. Cause, but I think that some people just do like, uh, to be able to tell someone what the movie is about and like mm -hmm. be able to like do a good, a good trailer and, um, like it was nice that I could kind of lean heavily on like Alex, almost like a comedic point. Like Alex is having such a shit time at college. And that was like a nice thing to be able, like that movie was, this guy's having a bad freshman year. And so that was, that's always nice to have, but really the movie is just about two people dealing with their second homes in very different ways. And they um, are both lacking things, but they're, uh, but they both also have things to offer each other and help each other with. And, um, uh, yeah. Yes. Mm. But where does, where did the spark for, like when you go down to write that movie, um, like, what are you, what drives you through the pages? You know, like, like why, um, what's, what's, interesting about um i guess you know like why do you yeah. write i i think it's, it's all about like i like i'm i really am in love with the characters and um and i think i always care about trying to say stuff but that's not what drives me through the pages i think what mm -hmm. drives me through the pages is just like uh i've i have these characters that i can't like stop thinking about and i like need to see what's going to happen with them so it's like that really does like get me through it fast and mm -hmm. like i write really fast and it's because i just like have to see what's going to happen with them 
And sometimes I do have these, sometimes I do have these really great ideas that I think are like, oh my God, so great. And then I uh, pick these characters after that. And I never finish those uh, scripts because I just like don't really care as much. And it, cause I, I think it's, it's so hard to write. And the only way that I've found uh, like to make it easy is to just be so obsessed with all of the characters in it and like always wanting to like can we add this character into the scene because I really want to see this character and it's like no that doesn't work but like um, like especially the things I'm writing now with being able to have like more money you can add more characters because like with, mm. with Shit House you did it had to be a kind of smallish world and I think it lent itself nicely to Alex being the main character, I think he does always gonna have like a small world around him, or I like just at least told myself that. So I didn't, we didn't have as much as many characters because mm. we didn't have that much money. But um, with other things that I'm writing, knowing I'll have more money, I do like have more uh, a bigger world to write, and I think that's really fun. And but yeah, to answer your question, it's gotta always be your intense love for the characters like i think it i when i watch movies where the characters are per, on purpose unlikable i'm like yeah. how did they get this out mm. like they had to spend you it's been you spend so much time with writing but also turning that script into an actual movie and you spend all that time with people that you are like saying in interviews yeah you're not supposed to like them it's like what are you talking about and that boggles my mind. And I think that that's a lot of movies are like that. Like you'll hear like directors in their interview chair be like, yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to like that person. It's like, then why did, did you show it to me? Like, yeah. I understand, like you have, like every human ever has like intense flaws, but like, I like most everyone. And so for me to watch a movie where I'm like, I don't like this person. I just like, God, I wish I didn't spend the time on this and I don't know how you must be so m such a miserable person that you just like spent all of that time with these like shitty ass people and that's why I like I've, I've read some things about shit I was where people are like are people getting nicer like there's a lot of nice characters in this and even like the douchey roommate ends up being like just like to utter sweetheart even though he says things that are like so out of pocket and horrible and like not with the times but like mm. you, you love him and you're endeared to him and be I think because when I was writing him, even on the first, in that first scene, I'm like, I love this character so much. And I think like Logan Miller who played the character was like, I love this guy. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's such a, he's like the embodiment of shit house, but like we love shit house. Like I, like that's where you want to, where you want to be sometimes. Like that's where we have to be sometimes. And I wanted to make sure that everybody in the movie, uh, came across like like I wanted you to love everybody in the movie even the guy who like uh says even the guy who like <laughs> he's like I love college so much and comes back and is like do you want to again in tenant like he's mm -hmm. there's something about him like he's one that's one of my close friends Nick Sasso and it's just like you know he's such a, a douche like it's like there's something I like about him mm -hmm. maybe maybe m most people won't see that but I think uh you just understand like what it, life is. Just, yeah, I, I. So yeah, to answer your question, that was a long-winded answer. But I, I just what moves me through is just how much I love the people that I'm writing. Yeah. Um, do you think it comes from, from, like, do you think you could ever write a movie that's not really uh, that close to your real life? Because for me, when I think about about like writing something it's either that i write about uh like what high school is like or i write about something that i don't know anything about right so do you have that feeling uh so i i when i'm writing just like from nothing like when i have like nothing in front of me but like a blank page obviously mm -hmm. i'm just gonna write about uh things that i've experienced like people that i know like in my mm -hmm. like pretty well um, but I do a lot of, and I think a lot of filmmakers will say this, like they just, you do a lot of like reading books and like, uh, art, reading articles and trying to like find inspiration through other people's stories. And like right now, 
um, I'm working on something that is really far away from anything that I've experienced, but I like, I've just really immersed myself in uh, these people's story and like done so much reading to the point where I feel like I, I'm really excited to make a movie about uh, someone's experience that is so different than mine because like, and it's a different experience. Like it's way different than making something like shit which is so like, I mean, even shit out is like, it is a personal movie obviously, but it's, I'm not, I'm mean, going to hope to God. I'm not like Alex, Like you do have some kind of outside perspective of like, I'm making a movie about people that aren't, like, I don't want to feel, ever feel like I am. Like, it's not you. Uh, yeah, right. Like, I don't want to ever make a movie about my, myself. Mm. And so, even though I maybe like people think that Alex is a lot like me, I'd like to go on record saying he's not at all. Like, I tried mm. to make someone who was, like, really highlighted the pain of leaving home and growing up. And, like, no one does that better than Alex. And because he's just so uh, close to the pain. Mm. Um but yeah but to answer your question i always do i think a lot of my early like shit house and this other thing that I, like the first thing i wrote after shit house it was like very close to my experiences and people that i know and relationships that i've had but then there's this other thing that it's like so not anything that i've experienced but i just like i really really love it because um i don't it it's nice to work on something that doesn't hit uh like it's nice to learn about things like because yeah. I, I was about to say it's nice to work on things that don't that don't hit close to home but the reason why i wanted to work on it is because it i read it about it and it hit so close to home so it's like mm. it feels personal to me but it um the way the characters talk and the way the they're just not it's not something that i've like been around it's just me having to talk to the people in real life and like um read about them and that sort of thing yeah yeah um so um i guess i want to talk a little bit about um like acting and um like filming shithouse so yeah there was there was one like the phone call at the climax of the movie um huh. how did you were you talking to someone when you were recording that or were you just talking to yourself i was talking to myself i know that sounds bizarre but um yeah everyone on set was like after we cut because i had to i'm calling cut too so mm -hmm. it's like i do that whole scene and i'm like cut and i look at everybody and they're like are you okay what that's because it's a crazy thing like if you're picturing me just like I just, I've had, I don't know if I've ever had that conversation, but I just knew it so well that it was, it didn't feel weird to me that I was like, cause I could hear my mom so well. And like, I, um, I don't know. It's, it's weird, I guess, to talk about cause it makes me seem so manic, but like I do, it's the same thing as writing for me. Like I'm like sitting, like writing just from my head, but like I'm crying, thinking about it. like being so real and so mm. i think in that scene i really felt like i was talking to my mom and um and maybe there is a a part of it too that's like i wrote these words and maybe my mom's not ever really said these things to me but i maybe would like her to or like maybe i it, that there's that part in it too that's interesting like um I, it was so emotional, like, I mean, obviously, clearly, we watched yeah. the movie, but, like, the, filming that scene was, people have asked me if, like, it's hard, and it wasn't hard at all, it was, like, if anything, it was um, hard to not, like, let it out sooner, because, like, the moment I started the call, because, and that's, the character knows he's about to go into this conversation and say these things, and yeah. say, I maybe I shouldn't, call as much anymore like he knows he's going to say that so i think it's just a really emotional scene that i think a lot of writers would say like 
you need to go on more of a journey here. But I was like, no, the, the goal here is to like communicate to his family that like he is wants to be more present where he is. And that I think means less um, phone time with the fam, which is like mm. devastating. And also just like, I love my mom so much and think all the time about how uh, impossibly horrible it is to like raise a kid for so long and then just be like, here you go world. And like, cause you do, everyone says goodbye to their mom. Like you, like you just, this is a part of life. Like you obviously stay in touch and I hope people don't take away, like you shouldn't be close with your mom. Cause like, he's going to be so close with his mom forever, but there's a new sort of relating to your mom that begins when you like move on to that second home. And I think me in my life, I like, put that off for a long time and just was like trying to keep it the way that it was, even though I was like so far away in Los Angeles when she was in Dallas. So I like, but I still tried to like keep up the, no, we're, I'm living at home basically. And so, but, it, and I don't think I ever had that call where I was like, I'm not living. Like I didn't have that clear thought, but. but um, was it just that the emotions were so like, like you identified with them so much that, that like, it just came to you like you didn't have to yeah you didn't have to act right it wasn't yeah it wasn't acting it was just like uh sad, sadness <laughs> mm. and um yeah and i think that that's what the reason why i wanted to make the movie really and it was like scary but uh i was so like it did feel so good and i don't want to ever make something that's like cathartic and i i don't know if it was cathartic but i just like I wanted my mom to see it. Like I was so excited, not excited, but I just like, I, it was really lovely to like watch it with my mom and just like cry with her and like, to like put it into words. Like that's what movies are, is like trying to say like those feelings that are all like messy and like, mm. but like really trying to clarify those feelings, I think. And um, that's what I loved about acting in that scene, but also like, like showing it to my mom, which was like, cause it's, I think it's the ultimate, like, hey, I see you crying on the other end and I appreciate you holding back the tears. And um, yeah. Yeah. But I think um, all of that too, like all that emotion was like in, the, like I think part of the reason why Alex is so upset too and crying so hard is cause like he also knows that his mom is like, like when he says, I'm sorry at the end of that call, yeah. he's like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry that it sucks so hard to be a mom. And she, yeah. and then she like looks over at her daughter even, and she's like, oh my God, you're going to leave too. And I think it's just like, it's just, it's really horrifying to be a parent sometimes. And I think uh, Amy just did such a good job, like showing the, like the subtle, the subtleties of that. Mm. Yeah. Um, so um, I want to know, um, well, I want to know, like, um, like with acting also, how do you, um, how do you, like, how do you not make it seem overacted, you know, like, um, is it just, is it just like doing it a lot, the repetition or, or to really like feel like a real person is saying that and not not like uh, an actor is saying that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing about, that's the biggest thing that makes movies good is like really feeling like um, you're not watching a, a movie. And I think that a lot of it is just like getting great actors, like everyone in the, in the movie is such a good actor. But like, if I think about certain, like there were some friends that were in the movie who had never acted and probably weren't great actors, but the way that I liked to, I guess, I don't know, it's, it is hard to like direct, like something to feel real. But I think if you're close enough with the person, you can kind of like, I did a lot of rehearsal. I do like love to rehearse. And I think that that's a way to get to like the heart of like something real is to like, just do it over and over again till it mm -hmm. feels right. But like that first time when you're rehearsing, like the first go through, I think you can kind of like look at each other and be like, this part didn't feel real. And I think it's really easy to know that as an actor, like that didn't feel, it's not that it didn't feel right. It's just like, it doesn't feel like 
I wasn't feeling anything during that. And so mm-hmm. I think uh, rehearsing with Dylan was so uh, important and helpful in just like making sure we knew we knew what felt real. Like I could look at her and she always knew like after each take we were like, that didn't feel real or that did feel real. Or like we knew when we got it too, it was like, oh my God. And then like we move on because we just knew that it felt so visceral. And also I think in rehearsal, because you want it to feel real, but you also want to know what's engaging about the scene and like what's fun about the scene. So I think rehearsal is also good in terms of like getting on the same page about like what do we love about the scene too. Mm. But yeah, getting, it's also in the writing some, I think, like making sure that you, they're not having to say things that, that don't feel good coming out of their mouth. And I think like with every actor, I always told them, rewrite it if you if it doesn't feel right coming out of your mouth. And like, I, I think Dylan, I always told her, like, here's the line, but as you're saying it in the scene, please rewrite it if it's like, does not want to come out of your mouth the way that it's written. Like, I don't mm. care about people, like, sticking to the script in that way. Yeah. Um, but is it is it a conscious effort to... Um, it, or, or does it just flow like a regular conversation? No, I think I think it just flows. Like, I, I, don't, I don't ever try to, like, be like, guys, we got to be real. I think it's guys, mm. we, like, that was wrong. Like, that wasn't, didn't feel real. So I think... Um, What's, I think what's always nice is like having at least one amazing actor in every scene. Like mm-hmm. like with Dylan, she's amazing. And there was never a time where I wasn't feeling so real with her because like she just demands, like you can't be fake with her because it's going to feel so weird. So you just like have to get on the level of like, we're in this moment together. And yeah. like, I feel so nervous about like being in your room. Like it just, with her, you just feel that. And I think with Logan, he's so good too. And so like, you feel like you're in that room trying to converse with your roommate. So I don't, I don't think there's ever, it's never, I'm never, I don't like have on a poster, like we're going to be real today, guys. Like I think Mm. it just comes, it flows. Mm. And um, I have some last questions to ask you, some like more broader questions. Um, What do you think, uh, brings brings you happiness or fulfillment on a on a like day-to-day basis um it's a great question i uh the people around me um but also knowing that um like feeling confident in like what how I'm spending my days. I think I've thought a lot about this this year, obviously, like um, I spent a lot of time by myself, like not seeing people. And um, I think what makes me feel fulfilled at the end of the day is like feeling good about what I did. Even if I didn't do uh, what I set out to do or or I my the day went like this, I just like mm-hmm. feeling self-assured, I think is what makes me feel f- fulfilled if that makes any sense like I think um like not beating yourself up for spending certain times a certain way like no one knows no one's like knows what they're doing on a day to day so like if you can feel try to feel good about what you're doing and um maybe have some goals but if you don't meet the goals it's okay too like there's a reason why you didn't meet the goals and hopefully it was like everything was like for a good uh reason in terms of like your actions Mm. and also like i don't i haven't had like a lot lots of opportunities to like treat people in a shitty way so but like knowing that like you were not you're doing good things i think makes you feel fulfilled like i I don't think i would feel fulfilled if i like was an asshole on a certain day Mm. but Um, the other question what makes me uh, yeah did i answer it yeah and then (laughs) um well just like would you say it's um doing things that 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 you know that that you like you're confident or that you're you're not going to regret what you're doing no i don't think i think about that have you seen Mm -hmm. soul the movie yeah i did 
like I, I, I just like sobbed and sobbed and sobbed watching that, and mm. because it's just, um, the way they they get at like just feeling good about things and like feeling good about like the way that they did the subway thing. Like I was just like, I don't know why, but I loved it. Like that's how I. That's what makes me feel fulfilled. It's like it's not necessarily like. I gotta write every day or I gotta work to make this movie or something. It's not mm -hmm. like that does feel great. And those like, you, that's a part of it. And, but like, there are other parts of it that like, if your day goes this way, it's like, I really love that. And I really like feel assured about like how I spent my time. It's like, it's just a, a mindset thing. Like at the end of the day, not, not like trying to look over, like, do I regret anything? It's like just mm -hmm. looking over and being like, that was a great day of life. And so that's what makes me feel fulfilled. I think that soul is so, was so good at like, not demonizing people who are like, have such intense passions and like, can't talk about anything else, but also just like, uh, making f people who like, don't fit well into capitalism, make like, making that like, such a m meaningful thing. Cause it is so meaningful, even more so maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. So, if you had uh, any advice that you would give to like your your high school self, uh, well, what would that? Would you would you give any advice to your younger self or or not? Um. Oh, would I or not? I think mm. I. I think I wouldn't. Or if I. Mm, that's a really tough question because usually the question is always just uh what advice would you give yourself mm. um but if i had the option of not giving myself advice i think i might not give myself advice i think it would like creep my high school self out to, to like hear from me <laughs> they'd yeah. be like fuck off they wouldn't listen um but i think if i i i wish in high school i i um didn't think so much about um and i don't think i did think so much about it but like i wish i didn't spend i wish i just like tried to enjoy it more and um like you just get caught up in a lot in high school and then mm -hmm. things like really not slow down but just get like big uh in college like it feels like it it, it gets big but in high school it is big you're just like really focused on very particular things in a huge way like things like little things feel so big and i think that that's great and that's important and that's a part of high school but like i wish that i did try to i think the main thing is just trying to enjoy everything and not just like fixating on certain things or like getting mixed up in uh like am i gonna ace this test or something like am i gonna like uh is this class the class that i want to take it's like sometimes it's not the class you want to take but like there's a lot of things to enjoy about it like the teacher or like who else is in the class or like uh finding a little like funny i don't know like i i think uh i i would have tried to tell myself in high school to relax i don't think i was very mm. relaxed because like when i watch shit house there's there's like the feeling of um you know, Alex is, is like, uh, he kind of wants his, his high school, uh, days back. Yes. Uh, but watching that about college, I was kind of like, like, I can't wait until I'm there. Yeah. But then I also realized that I should just, you know, one day I'm going to be there and then I'm not going to, uh, and then I'm going to like wish I were back in high school. So to kind of like enjoy it. Yeah, and isn't that so emotional? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, totally. And um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna miss high school no matter what. And that's the, like, even if like people who have like the shittiest high school experience, you leave and you're gonna be like, yeah, I kind of miss it. Cause you're gonna, you, you just miss being small. And like, um, like, uh, uh, you know, life is moves in a crazy way. But I think that yeah, I would have told myself to relax. And I think that um, you don't have to make memories like you're, you're, you're gonna have memories and like, you're gonna love those memories and cherish them. 
And so you don't have to force anything. That's the advice that I would give myself in mm. high school. Um, but yeah, also college is so awesome too. And you should feel like so excited and like, I can't wait, like, cause it is so great and like such a cool thing. If you go to college, like you don't have yeah. to go to college. But I mean, no, like I'm, uh, your, your story of, of dropping out of college is, is interesting to me because like I will, I want to go to college, but also, uh, like my parents want me to go to college too. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but, uh, uh, like you pursuing what you want to do while going to college, like in, yeah. when you made shit house, uh, on spring break, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. Tell your parents, like parents are tricky. Uh, but I think also, uh, with for me i had to explain i i had to really i dropped out like not having something very solid so mm -hmm. i i think it's important to really give it a go like trying to do a college and like making a movie or something at the same time i think mm -hmm. it can't it's really it is possible but there do there sometimes there comes a point where you have to convince your parents like I do have to drop out in this moment. And I think that that's um, important because I got a lot of pushback of like, you can do both. And it's like, no, I actually want to focus on just this to make it amazing. Mm -hmm. And like, just, I think parents want to know that you're just not gonna ha half-ass it because they grew up in a certain way. And um, if you can, can convince them that you're not gonna half-ass it, then they'll be okay with anything. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, do you miss anything about college? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I, the, uh, yeah, I miss going to class. I, I, that's something that you don't get, like I don't have right now, and I don't think I ever will have ever again. And mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, enjoy the classroom. Even if you don't like learning, it's just like, it's so nice to, have like everyone look around everyone has a book out and we're all like going over the same passage like that's a wonderful experience and um so i do miss that a lot yeah but that's it mm. um well you know thank you for for being on here thank you thank you so um, much for having me happy new year's yeah happy happy 2021